Hello and welcome back to the next session of module number 3 analysis of force systems. In the previous session we had discussed about the concept of idealization and various classification of forces and also the characteristics of force. In this session let us try to understand about the force system which is non concurrent non coplanar and also let us try to understand what do you mean by the resultant of the forces, resolution of the forces, composition of the forces. Okay. So, let me start with non coplanar concurrent force system. This is the combination of non coplanar and also concurrent force system. Now, you know what do you mean by a non coplanar forces and also the concurrent force system. What happens when you combine together? Gives us the non coplanar concurrent force system. So, what do you mean by non coplanar concurrent force system? Non coplanar means if the forces are acting in two different planes. Concurrent means we have the common point of occurrence, the forces are occurring from a common point. Now, combination of these two that is if the forces are acting on different planes or they have a common point of occurrence, then we can call it as a force system which is non coplanar concurrent. Okay. So, if the forces forming a system do not lie in a single plane, but the forces are directed towards a single point, then the system is said to be non coplanar concurrent system. Let me write the figure. So, if I write the axis x, y and z, so there are forces acting in three different planes and are directed towards a common point. So, this is how the non coplanar concurrent force system looks like. Example for this, the legs of the tripod when a camera is mounted on a tripod. So, if you consider a tripod which is having a camera mounted above it, that can be taken as a best example for non coplanar concurrent force system. Okay. So, now similarly we can also explain non coplanar non concurrent force system. So, what do you mean by this again you know what is non coplanar and non concurrent that is if the forces forming the system do not lie in a single plane then we call it as a non coplanar and non concurrent 
if the forces forming a system do not have a common point of occurrence, then we call it as a non-concurrent force system. So, let me write the definition. Non-coplanar, non-concurrent. If the forces forming a system do not lie in a single plane and the forces are not having a common point then the system is said to be non coplanar non concurrent non coplanar non concurrent system so if i write the diagram x y and z f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 f6 say f7 so this will be the best example to understand the non coplanar non concurrent force system wherein the forces forming a system are not having a common point and these forces they are in different planes. So, this is one plane, this is another plane, this is another plane. So, the forces forming a system do not lie in a single plane, yes they do not lie in a single plane and also the forces are not having a common point of occurrence or the forces are not directed towards a point. Okay. So, that means non coplanar non concurrent force system. For example, for this the forces acting in a framed structure. So, what do you mean by framed structure? A framed structure is the one consisting of columns and beams. So, if you take this as an example, so these are the columns and this is a beam. So, the forces acting on this particular framed structure can be taken as a best example for the non coplanar non concurrent force system. I hope you have understood about the classification of force system in detail now. Okay. So, let me list out the forces which we have already studied and also we had discussed two force system in this session and let me list it out. So, Coming to the main classification, we have the coplanar and non coplanar. In coplanar, we have The very first type is collinear force. Secondly, we had discussed about the concurrent force system. Next, parallel force system. In parallel, we had like parallel unlike parallel next non parallel force system. So, 
what do you mean by collinear if the forces are having a same line of action or common line of action then it is called as a collinear force next concurrent force if the forces forming a system have a common point of occurrence either it may be a converging force or a diverging force or both converging and diverging next parallel if the forces are acting parallel to each other then we call it as a parallel force system in that we have a subdivision like like forces and unlike forces like forces are the one where in the forces are acting parallel to each other in the same direction in unlike forces the forces are acting parallel to each other but in different directions and at last non parallel force system if the forces forming a system are not parallel to each other then we call it as non parallel force system similarly under non coplanar we have concurrent non concurrent parallel and then non parallel so non coplanar concurrent force system that is the forces acting are not having a single plane and also they are having a common point of occurrence or the forces are directed towards a point then we call it as a concurrent force system that is non coplanar concurrent force system next is we have non coplanar non concurrent force system that means the forces are not acting in a single plane and also the forces are not having a common point of occurrence then we call it as a non concurrent force system and non coplanar parallel force system means if the forces are uh, acting in different planes and also they are parallel to each other then we can call it as a parallel non coplanar parallel force system and if the forces are not parallel to each other and also they do not lie in a single plane then we call it as non coplanar non parallel force system so now i hope you are clear with the classification of force system in detail how do you classify the force system what do you mean by coplanar what do you mean by non coplanar and in coplanar what are the classifications and in non coplanar what are the classifications i hope you have understood the classification of force system now if that is the case let me move on to the next concept that is resultant of the force system what do you mean by the resultant of the force system if i consider a body and consider forces f1 f2 f3 as shown in the figure this indicates there are three forces acting on a body okay so what do you mean by the resultant what we need to do is instead of writing these three forces always we can replace the same forces by a single force in such a way that there is no change in the effect of the force system acting on a body so that means whatever effect will be there on the body by these three forces will remain same after replacing f1 f2 f3 by a another single force that is the effect of the forces acting on a body will not change it will be maintained in the same manner that is nothing but the resultant
it is denoted by the letter R. So now what do you mean by the resultant force? So you can replace the number of force system acting on a body by a single force so that this R also produces the same effect as that of the forces F1, F2, F3 on a body. You can replace F1, F2, F3 by a single force called resultant R. This is the definition of resultant or the meaning of resultant of force. So, whenever you consider a force system acting on a body, a number of forces can be replaced by a single force. So, that single force is called as the resultant of the force system and it will have the same effect as that of the forces F1, F2 and F3. Okay. It will not change the effect of the forces acting on a body. We need to replace these forces F1, F2, F3 by a force called R which is called as the resultant of the force system. Okay. So, if I write the definition of the resultant, resultant of a is that single force is that single force which is capable of having the same effect as that of the system of forces acting on the body. I hope you have understood the meaning of resultant. So, the resultant of a system of forces is that single force which is capable of having the same effect as that of the system of forces acting on the body. So, if you observe the figure and whatever I have explained, you can easily understand what you mean by the resultant force system. Okay. So, now let me move on to the next concept that is resolution of forces. Okay. See here, the replacement of the force system by a single force is called as the resultant force system. Okay. Now, let me move on to the next topic. Which is resolution of the force system. What do you mean by the resolution of the force system? It is very much important to understand the force system. Okay. So, if you want to understand about the forces acting on a body, you need to understand about the re resolution of the forces. What do you mean by the resolution of the forces? If I consider a force, say F, and if this is acting at an angle of theta with respect to the horizontal or say x axis and if this is the y axis, if a force is acting at an angle of theta with respect to the horizontal axis, then we can divide this single force into two components. That is, we can divide this force into two different components. 
one acting along the horizontal direction and one acting along the vertical direction. That is the process of splitting up of a single force into two components is called as the resolution of the force system. I repeat the process of splitting up of a single force into two components which are perpendicular to each other that is called as the resolution of force system. This force can now be split into two different components one along horizontal direction one along vertical direction and it should be perpendicular ok. Those components along horizontal and vertical directions will be called as Fx and Fy. Here I need to split it up in two different components. I need to split this force into two different components. The resolution of force system means the process of splitting up a single force into two components in such a way that both the components are perpendicular to each other. That is it can be split up along the horizontal direction and along the vertical direction. Okay. Now, how can we split this force? This can be easily done by drawing a rectangle. That means the process of splitting up a single force into its rectangular components. Resolution is also defined in that way. The process of splitting up of the force in the form of a rectangular components that also gives us the resolution of forces. So, now let us see how. So, this is the force F. Now, let me let me make a rectangle. Now, I need to split the force F into two different components such as F x which is acting along horizontal direction and this is denoted by F y acting along vertical direction. Now, if you observe this looks like a rectangle, rectangular components. So, how do you determine the values of f x and f y? That is very important. Now, as I said, please observe this portion. Let me name this as point O and this is force f. Okay. Now, If I consider this triangle, right angle triangle, with this swing theta, and this will be F x, and this force is F. So, how do you determine F x? So, using basic trigonometric functions, and applying to the right angle triangle, we can easily write the value of F x. So this will be the right angle. Now, this is theta and this is opposite side and this is adjacent side and this is hypotenuse. So, if you want to apply the trigonometric functions, then you need to know what is the opposite side, adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Now, to determine this f x that is nothing but the adjacent side, which trigonometric function can we go for? So, sin theta is equal to opposite by hypotenuse that is ruled out not required. Then what about the cos theta? It is adjacent by hypotenuse, yes. Adjacent and hypotenuse are known in this case, yes. Hypotenuse is f, adjacent is fx. Then what about tan theta? It is opposite by adjacent. So, we do not know what is opposite. So, let is 
let us leave it as it is. So, if I apply cos of theta, I can write it as adjacent by hypotenuse. So, adjacent side is nothing but the force f x divided by hypotenuse is nothing but the force f. Now, we have cos theta is equal to f x by f on cross multiplication I can write f x equals to f into cos theta. Clear with this? This is the x component or the horizontal component of the force f which is inclined at an angle of theta with respect to its horizontal. Now, in the similar manner we can calculate the value of f y that is if I consider the same right angle triangle and the angle theta and this is the right angle and the inclined force is f. Now, what is this side? This is again the opposite and this is the adjacent and this is hypotenuse. Now, I am considering the same right angle triangle. Now, coming to this component opposite, please observe this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side. What is the length of the opposite side? See, it is nothing but f y. We can easily say this is equal to f y, yes or no? So, this is nothing but f y, opposite side is nothing but f y, force f y. Now, I want to calculate this f y. So, which trigonometric function can I go for? Can easily go with the sine function that is sin theta is equal to opposite by hypotenuse which is equal to what is opposite f y by hypotenuse is f. Now, sin theta is equal to f y by f on cross multiplying I can write f y is equal to f sin theta. Now, you can easily say that the horizontal component f x and the vertical component f y have been calculated. Okay. So, these are the values of f x and f y when we take a single fourth f and split it up along the horizontal and vertical directions and naming them as f x and f y respectively, then we can also calculate the values of f x and f y by using the trigonometric functions and writing the right angle triangle and applying the cos function to get f x and sin function to get f y. So, this is how you resolve a force that is splitting up a single force into two rectangular components or two different components along x and y which are perpendicular to each other. Okay. Now, let me write a note. What if the force is making an angle with respect to vertical axis? Here you can see it is making an angle theta with respect to horizontal, but what if the force f makes an angle theta with respect to vertical axis. So, if f makes an angle of theta with respect to y axis or vertical, I can write this as x and y axis and this is the force f 
this is theta. What you should do? That is, you can write the rectangular components of the same force F so that this will be called as Fx and this force will be called as Fy. Now, in the similar fashion by taking the right angle triangle and try to resolve the forces, we get See, I have written a figure consisting of both fx, fy and f and if you apply the trigonometric functions here, you will be getting cos theta is equal to if this is theta adjacent by hypotenuse. So, this is making the right angle. Now, what is the adjacent side? Since this is right angle, this is will be the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is F y by its hypotenuse is F or on cross multiplying we get F y equals to F cos theta. Similarly, if I take sin theta, I can write it as opposite side F x by adjacent f on cross multiplying we get f x equals to f sin theta. Please observe the values of f x and f y here. Since the angle is with respect to vertical axis, the f x and f y component is interchanged when you compare it with these two values. That is, when theta is an angle made with respect to horizontal, f x equals to f cos theta, f y is equal to f sin theta. But if this theta is with respect to vertical axis, your f y will be equal to f cos theta and f x is equal to f sin theta. So, this is how you split a force into two different components or the rectangular components and try to find the values of x and y, f x and f y. I hope you have understood this. Okay? Now, in the same resolution of the forces, let us try to understand how the forces can be resolved if the forces are placed in different quadrants and that is nothing but let us try to understand the sign conventions. Okay. Now, let me consider a force F1 which is making an angle theta with respect to horizontal say theta 1, okay, or let me name it as theta itself. Let the force F1 make an angle theta with respect to the horizontal as shown. So, what should be these sign conventions here? Okay. Similarly, let me consider one more force in the second quadrant, say F2 at an angle of beta. 
with respect to its horizontal axis. Similarly, let me consider one more force called F3 in third quadrant and let the angle which this makes with respect to horizontal be alpha and let us consider one more force in the fourth quadrant called F4 which makes an angle gamma with respect to horizontal. So, now you can observe there are four different forces acting in four different quadrants. So, this will be the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Now, what is the sign convention in first quadrant for x and y component? It is nothing but plus comma plus. This is already known. And in second quadrant, the x component is minus and the y component is plus. In third quadrant, the x component is also minus, y component is also minus. In fourth quadrant, the x component is plus and the y component is minus. x, y x y x y x y. So, this is already known, but how do you try to resolve the forces when it is having the inclination as shown that is splitting up of a single force into two different components and it should be made with respect to the quadrants that is very very important. Please note this point the arrow head which you write will be very much important. Okay? You cannot write the arrow head on your own. It all depends on in what direction the forces are acting okay? and in which quadrant the forces are lying in. That helps you out to decide the sign conventions. Okay? Now, if I try to resolve the force which is present in the first quadrant, I can split it up in two different components as x and y, correct? So, instead of completing this as a rectangle, let me show you how it can be resolved. So, I will be writing a point somewhere along the force, then what about its x component? So, it is nothing but if this is in the first quadrant and if the x is set to be positive that is towards right is positive that means the force f x should be written towards right and this can be written as f 1 x. Now, coming to its y component, it is also positive. When do we call the force as positive in the first quadrant? When it is acting upwards. This is called as F 1 y. Similarly, if I try to resolve the force F 2, now what about the sign convention for x? It is negative. When will be the x negative? When x is measured towards left, that is taken as negative and hence you need to write the horizontal component F 2 x as shown. Next coming to its y component, depending on the sign convention of y, when is y positive? When is, when y is measured upwards. So, when y is measured upwards, that is the force to be resolved is towards up. This is F to Y. Okay? Now, coming to the third quadrant. In third quadrant, let me consider a point along the force F3 and X is negative, Y is also negative. When will be the value of X negative? When X is measured towards left. When is Y negative? When Y is measured downwards. So, 
I can easily write the directions as f 3 x and f 3 y ok and at last we have the fourth force in quadrant number 4 and we have the values of x as positive and y as negative when is x positive when it is measured towards right and when is y negative when it is measured downwards. So, I can consider a point here and try to write its horizontal component as f 4 x and y as f 4 y. Now, we have split all the individual forces into its two rectangular components or two different components which are perpendicular to each other. I hope you have now got an idea about resolving a single force into two different components and writing the arrows of the resolved components also. Please be careful here in first quadrant you cannot change the arrowheads of f1 x and f1 y to the opposite of this. It should be always written with respect to f1 only. It all depends on which quadrant the force is lying. Similarly, f2, f3 and f4. Okay. So, before moving on to the actual resolution, let me write the sign convention. I have already mentioned this in the quadrants, but let me write for x component if it is measured towards right we take it as positive if x is measured towards left then we call it as negative then if y is measured upwards it is positive. If it is measured downwards, it is negative. Okay. So, x towards right positive, x towards left negative, y upwards positive, y downwards negative. Please keep these things in mind. Okay. Now, let me split the force F1 first. So, the angle which it is making is theta and the horizontal component is x, vertical component is y. So, I can write the horizontal component f 1 x is equal to. So, if the theta is with respect to horizontal we can easily write that as f 1 x is equal to f cos theta or f 1 cos theta and it is vertical f 1 y is equal to f 1 sin theta. Okay. So, now f 2 for, for force f 2 it is horizontal component is f 2 x. Please observe it is f 2 x. It is right written towards left so, hence it is minus f 2 cos theta, f 2 cos theta, it is vertical. So, it is sorry it is not theta, it is beta, vertical f 2 y is equal to it is measured upwards, hence it is positive that is f 2 sin 
beta. Now let me consider the third force F3. F3, its horizontal component. F3x is equal to, see the x component, it is acting towards left. So, it is minus, minus F3 cos alpha, its vertical F3y is equal to, it is acting downwards, so it is minus F3 sin alpha. At last we have the fourth force F4. So fourth force F4 in the fourth quadrant, X is measured towards right, Y is measured downwards. So F4 is, horizontal component is F4 cos gamma, its vertical component, F4y, since it is measured downwards, it should be negative. So, it is minus F4 sin gamma. So, this is how you resolve the forces or spread the forces in, when the forces are in different quadrants. Okay? So, if you observe, all the horizontal components are having its cos term and all the vertical components are having its sine term. Why? Because the angle which the force is making is with respect to horizontal for all the four forces. That is why x component is written with cos and y component is written with sin. If the angle is interchanged, if it is not with respect to horizontal and it is with respect to vertical, then you have to write the values correspondingly. Okay?